A very warm welcome to all of you on behalf of Midas IT. I, Akash Sharma, welcome you to this webinar on PileRap Foundation Analysis with Superstructure and Substructure, in which basically I mainly will be focusing on Midas GTS NX and I will give a brief introduction about the capabilities of Midas Swellworks. So about the geotechnical webinar series which we have been conducting, the first was on May 13th in which we basically discussed the slope stability analysis using the SRM and LEM method. Today's topic is pile wrap foundation analysis with superstructure and substructure consideration. And the next webinar will be on June 10th, the topic being the soil structure interaction for the short excavation using 3D finite element method. And the fourth one, that is on June 24th, uh, the topic is the tunnel analysis and design using 2D and 3D finite element method. So talking about today's workflow, first of all a brief introduction about PileRap Foundation. What is the need of PileRap Foundation? The favorable and unfavorable conditions for this particular type of foundation and what is the design approach which is basically considered. Then I'll be discussing the need of numerical analysis and how the design approach is involved with the preliminary and complete analysis in numerical methods. Finally, I'll be dealing with a case study in which I'll be modeling the superstructure and substructure in GTS Annex and I'll be talking about its advantages. Finally, in the structure soil model, I'll be talking about the rigid and flexible foundation response and how to determine the soil spring stiffness using GTS Annex. To end with, I'll just give a brief introduction to PY nonlinear analysis, which is available in our 2D solution uh, called MIDAS Soilworks. So, pile raft foundation. Foundation which makes use of raft and piles to reduce the differential settlements leading to considerable economy are referred to as pile enhanced raft or pile raft foundations. Now the need of pile raft foundation comes into places where you need to reduce the maximum settlement, where you need to control the differential settlement, where one need to go for the economical design or where lateral loads play a very important factor. Now what are the favorable conditions for pile raft? According to Paulus, wherever the soil profiles consist of relatively stiff clays or relatively dense sand, it becomes very important or it is a very favorable condition for pile wrap. Why so? Because the raft has a very high bearing capacity in that case and provide a proper stiffness to the foundation. So the pile just act as a support which enhance the overall function of the pile wrap uh, foundation. The unfavorable condition for the pile drive foundation are first two if you can see that soil profiles containing the soft clays near the surface or the loose sands near the surface their pile drive foundations are not recommended. Similarly wherever there is a chance of consolidation like where there is soft compressible layers at shallow depths or where is there is consolidation settlement due to external causes there the thing happen is that the raft no longer remains in contact with the soil and all the force is then taken by the piles leading to excessive settlement in the long term cases. And finally we have the soil profiles which are likely to undergo swelling moments due to external causes and it causes tension in the piles. So these are basically the favorable and unfavorable conditions for pile raft. Now the design approach for pile raft. It is a two stage design process. First we basically call as approximate preliminary stage and the second is the complete analysis procedure. Now in the approximate preliminary stage, it is just to assess the feasibility of pile life foundation for the project. That is one should consider it or not. And the estimation of the required number of piles to satisfy the design requirement. So it is just a first hand calculation. Now the second is the complete analysis procedure where one need to determine the spacing of the piles the pile diameter, the pile location or one can say the arrangement of the piles one which is going for the project. Now what is the need for the numerical analysis? As you can see there is a raft and there is a pile. 
So whenever you are considering a Raphael combination, there are different types of interaction which one needs to consider. Like we have the pile soil interaction, the pile pile interaction, the raft soil interaction and the pile raft interaction within itself. So in such cases, a simulation of this interaction becomes very much important. With the traditional approach, they count for one or two interaction. But with the numerical analysis, now all the interactions could be considered in the model. So how do we do the preliminary analysis in the numerical method? So in the preliminary analysis, one need to check the feasibility of the pile wrap and at least predict that the minimum number of the piles as I have already discussed. So what we do is that we create a model, we consider only raft and let's say pile raft and then we check for the maximum displacement and the maximum differential settlement which is occurring in the pile and thus we can decide whether one should go for raft only or whether one should go for pile raft. So this is the model, uh, basically this is the analysis which will be performing today in our case study. We'll be considering two type of foundation, one raft only and other pile raft and we'll check that what is the maximum dif uh, displacement and what is the differential settlement which is occurring in our model. So and we'll decide that whether we should go for pile raft or raft only. Now with the complete analysis with the numerical method, the first is the spacing of the piles. So based on the design criteria, let's say the design criteria says that the displacement should not be more than a particular value, it is a totally a hit and trial approach. So you could consider two types of spacing and then you can run the analysis and get the results. The second is the pile diameter for which you can use the parametric study option where you can just change the pile diameter and get the analysis result for the same model. The third one is the pile location or arrangement of the piles. Uh, it is similar to the spacing of the piles and it is just hit and trial method. So what one can do is that they can con consider two foundations, let's say with a particular raft at, uh, depth and particular pile arrangement and similarly you can consider other raft with a different depth and with a more dense pile combination and thus you can see that whether it, it uh, satisfies your uh, design criteria. So for today's case study, what we'll be doing is that basically I'll show you how to import the model from Gen into GTS NX and then I will model the foundation in uh, GTS NX and then we'll consider, we'll be modeling two types of foundation, pile raft foundation and raft foundation for the same model and we'll see that how the displacement or how the differential settlement occurs. So. Uh, today's presentation will mainly focus on this case study and I will show you how easy it is to work on with uh, GTS NX. So first of all, this is the product Midas uh, Gen interface and I have created a simple building. So to import this file, just go to file and in the export option go to MXT file that is for FEA and GTS. FEA and GTS both are product of Midas. So let the name be gen file and just save it. So now you can just close it. Now you can open GTN, GTS NX. So file, new. So this is basically the interface of GTS NX. So as soon as you open a new file, the model will ask uh, for the type of modeling which uh, you want to go for, whether it is 3D, 2D and the unit system you want to work with. So you can change it initially and also at later time you can change it. I will show you how. So just click OK. So let's suppose if you want to change the unit system, you can directly use the options which is at the right bottom corner of your screen. Now I will just import the building model. So go to the GTS NX icon, import and go to Midas MXT. Just select the file which you have created and click open. So as soon as you do this, the, the building model is automatically imported and 
now to see the properties which you have uh, defined you need to go to property 1D and you can see the columns and beams since we are going to define uh, we are going to create the foundation itself I will just delete the boundary condition so go to analysis you can see that we have three tabs model analysis and results in the analysis all the boundary and all the uh, load function could be fine so go to boundary and just delete the boundary set okay so now I will just create the foundation for this particular model so I'll just move the work plane so move work plane click on normal and you can just reset to GCS so click OK now to create the foundation what I would be doing is that I would just create the rectangle and I would extrude the geometry to form the solid I will just uh, it will be more clear when I will demonstrate it uh, to you so this is basically the interface of GTS NX so you can see that all the geometric function could be find in this tab bar then we have the meshing then static slope analysis and similarly for different analysis it has been uh, tapped into different forms so that one need not spend too much time learning GTS NX. So just click on rectangle. So just input the point as 0 comma 0 press enter and as soon as you press enter the method changes to relative dx or dy so this means that now the input which you are inputting it is relative to your first point so with origin there is no such an issue so just click apply so you can see the rectangle is formed so this is basically my raft now next thing which I want to create is basically my soil model so once again I would create one more rectangle so just input the coordinate as minus 4 comma minus 4 and the relative distance let's say 17 comma 17 so enter so you can see that there has been created two rectangles one is basically for my raft and the other is for my soil model so now I need to make my solid geometry so just go to extrude so in the extrude option so whenever you want to select a particular type of element or particular type of curve this is the selection filter so just make it basic so it automatically take care of wire wire is nothing but a closed loop of edges so that is what a rectangle is so just select the target object so this is my raft let's say now select the direction in which you want to extrude so just select that particular axis and the length let's say the depth of the raft which I'd be keeping is 0.3 so now you can just preview it so you can see that it's coming topwards and I want it downwards so you can just reverse the direction and click apply so my raft is created now next I'll create my geometry for the soil model so once again you just change it to basic let it be wire and just click the outer rectangle select the direction and let the length now being 2 meter you can just preview it preview helps uh, to minimize the error in case of modeling and click apply so this is my top layer of soil now I will just select the bottom most face and I will extrude it once again so just select that axis and let's say the length being 8 meter so just preview it and click OK so this is basically my solid modeling now in this particular case uh, the piles which I am considering is I would be defining them as beam element so I would just generate curves for them so in the model in the geometry option you can find all the geometry which you have created like the two curves that is the two rectangles and all the three solids so whenever you want to check or uncheck you can use these options so let us uncheck two solids and let the raft be there now what I am doing is that I am creating a pile just below each column so I will show you how it is how easy it is to create with GTS NX just go to geometry and use the command line and use the uh, there are two type of line 2d and 3d 2d is basically when you want to create a line in the working plane and 3d is when you want to move out of the working plane 
so we'll be going for 3D and just input the coordinates where you want to create your pile and just press enter and now once again relative so let uh, the depth of the pile being 3 meter so click OK so you can see that your pile has been created now to create more number of piles what you can do is that you can use the option translate so you can go to geometry and in the option transform uh, you can uh, use the option translate so just click on translate so once you have created a curve what you can do is that you can just translate it at the particular location you want so just select that particular curve and select the direction in which you want to extrude so let it be the x-axis and what you want to do is you just want to make a copy so just click on copy and then the distance so let the distance be 4 meter that is the distance between the columns and the number of times let's say 2 so once again you can just preview it so you can see the two curves uh, which will be created so just click apply now to just uh, you can just use the translate uh, for creation of pile in the y direction so just select the curves and once again select the direction that is the y axis in this particular case and distance 4 meter and times 2 so once again preview it so you can see the pile being created so just click OK so as you can see that the piles it is the modeling is so easy with GTSNX what we have done is we have created the soil model and we have created the curves which will be defined as piles so next thing which we need to define is basically the properties so first we'll start with the properties ground material property so just click on the mesh option and there you can find the material tab now first of all we'll create isotropic material property and the model type let it be the more column and the name being the top soil for the top layer soils and the property the E value being the same and similarly you need to input the poison ratio the unit weight similarly in the nonlinear parameters cohesion let the value being let's say 28 and the frictional angle being 32 and click OK so the topsoil material property has been created next we need to create is uh, for the bottom layer so once again go to material isotropic and the material type as Moore column and let the name being bottom soil and we can just increase the modulus of elasticity and the nonlinear parameters uh, let us just change it to 20 and let's say 40 click OK so this is my bottom soil property the next 3D modeling or uh, the next property which uh, we want to consider is that for raft so let the name being raft so the properties let's say elastic so you can just uh, give it the E value and the poison ratio let it be 0 0.2 and the unit weight being 24 so just click OK so till now what I've did is that I've created uh, the material property for my top soil my bottom soil and raft so the property which we have defined for raft we can also name it as let's say concrete so that we will be using the same material properties for our piles too so let the name be concrete and click OK so close it so having defined the material property the next thing we need to define is the type of element to which we are going to assign it let's suppose uh, we have the solid elements and we have the 1D or the pile elements so just go to property so in the property to so create so which kind of elements uh, which uh, you are going to use so we have 3d element so in the 3d element so let the name being topsoil and the material type then you can select it from here topsoil 
and click OK. So the topsoil material property which is a 3D property uh, with the topsoil ground material property has been created. Similarly create for other properties let's say create 3D and let's say the name being bottom soil just select the material as bottom soil and click OK and finally we have the 3D property that is for a raft so just name as raft the material let's say concrete and click OK you can see that there is a material property called M40. M40 is basically the beam and column property which we have imported from Gen and it is automatically considered in the program. You can see that there are two types of property. One is column and other is the beam. These are basically directly imported from Midas Gen. Now we'll be creating the property for Pi. So create 1D because we are going for a beam element. So you can just select beam. Let the name being Pi. So material type, whatever you want to consider M40 or the concrete material property which you have considered. And finally the section. So just click on section and let it be solid round and let the dia be 0 0.3. Click OK. And click OK once again. So now the pile has been generated. So first of all, we we'll assign the ground material properties and then we will generate the pile. So just activate the solids and I'll just deactivate the mesh sheet. Default mesh sheet is basically the mesh sheet for the building which we have imported. So this is the model with me right now. So go to mesh, go to 3D mesh. Just select the object. So this is my first solid and let the size be 0 0.5 GTS NX provides with two type of uh, mesher one is the default tetra mesher and other is the hybrid mesher so you can just select the hybrid mesher now first of all I am giving it the property of the top soil what I would be doing is that I will be uh, simulating the construction stage analysis because uh, many of the attendees requested uh, for the same so I'll be showing you how to define the construction state analysis and the inal and the analysis itself I will change the property to concrete so for now it is topsoil so let the name being raft excavation so just click apply so the mesh has been created now similarly select the other two solids and the topsoil and let it the name being the topsoil main and click apply so you can go for both kind of meshing you can go for tetra meshing as well as the hybrid meshing with a GTS NX with its powerful solver and 64-bit platform it can handle large-scale uh, geometric models as well as analysis similarly just select the bottom layer the property you need to change bottom soil and let the name being bottom soil and just click OK in between if you have any queries uh, you can write it in the question tab box uh, I will just reply after the end of the session so having created uh, the hybrid mesh uh, then next thing which we need to do is that we need to generate the mesh shed for our pile. Similarly, you have to assign the interface property for the pile and let's suppose if you are considering an end bearing pile, you need to define the tip nodal resistance of the pile or otherwise you just need to define the skin fiction of the pile. So you can go for very fine mesh and you can go for very coarse mesh with such kind of modeling. Now the thing which I want to show you right here is that there is a function called auto connect function in Midas GTS. So whenever you are considering a very complex model, what you can do is that you can use the function auto connect function and what the program will do is that it will automatically generate the co-face. Co-face is nothing but it is uh, a proper ensurement that uh, the nodal connectivity is automatically taken care of by the program. So I, I have just meshed it without auto connect to show you that what is the difference. So when you check 
if you want to check your mesh quality go to mesh go to check mesh quality and in the feature edge free faces oranges click apply and go to front view so you can see that there is no clumsiness in between uh, in between the mesh it so the mesh is fine for this particular case now you can just uncheck the solids and uncheck the mesh sets which you have created so now to generate the 1D mesh you just click on 1D mesh select all because that's why I have unselected all the things let the number of divisions being 1 property of pi and let the name being pi so click ok so the mesh has been created you can see it's very light in color so next thing which we need to define is the interface behavior or what we can say with the main thing which will take consider of the soil structure interaction so in the mesh you can see that there is an option called pile pile tip now pile pile tip so you need to define the properties you can select all the elements so these are basically the piles you need to create a property I have not created it earlier just to show you the pile function property so just go to create interface and pile in the material option in the model type you can find pile pile is basically a model type created in GTS NX where you can directly input the ultimate shear force and the KT and KN value which are basically the shear stiffness and the normal stiffness value so let the ultimate shear force being 2000 and the shear stiffness value and finally the normal stiffness value just click OK just close this window let the name being interface and click OK so we have already selected the element so you can just click apply now the second thing which you need to consider that is the pile tip pile tip is basically uh, considering the end bearing capacity of the pile so you can just select the end nodes of the pile and you can just define the property as the tip bearing capacity of the pile and you need to define the tip bearing stiffness for the pile click OK and click OK now having created the piles and defining the interface properties if you want to see the section of your property because till now it was just a beam element so you can check it the dia of the pile which has been assigned so you can see the actual stiffness which is going to take while considering uh, while being considered in the analysis so now uh, we have defined the geometry we have defined the material property we have assigned the property that is 3d or 1d property we have created the pipes the next thing which we need to do is the boundary conditions so let us start first with the piles so just uncheck the section so for boundary condition static slope analysis in the boundary you can see the constraint in the constraint we have three types of options basic like whenever you want to go for fixed pint or no rotation you can directly select advanced where you can control the degree of freedom so just select all and we'll just restrain it in the RZ direction and let the name being pile constraint naming of the boundary set always is helpful whenever you are uh, you are considering construction stage analysis so just click apply now the next thing is we need to define the boundary condition for our soil mass so I will just uh, like to show you the advanced option called auto auto is an option where it will automatically give the appropriate boundary condition to your model so let the boundary set name being GS that stands for ground support and consider all mesh sheets and click OK and automatically the boundary conditions will be defined for you okay the next thing which we need to consider is the change property option so I will just uncheck all the mesh sets so you can just control your vision from here similarly in the analysis if you want to uncheck boundary condition you can do that you can uncheck the static load too 
So in the model, I have just activated the raft now, which is having the top soil property. So go to change property. And what I want to do is, I want to change the property during the construction stage. So select all the elements. Now these elements are having the top soil property. So what I will do is that I will excavate it and then I will give it the property of raft. So just select the raft and click OK. So a boundary conditions will be created. You can see that in the analysis in the boundary, a boundary condition has been created for the same. So whenever you activate it the, with this method, uh, the property will change to raft. Or concrete property. Now let us see how we define the construction state sequence. Uh, initially I told you that I would be considering two types of foundation in a single model that is one raft and for the pile raft and I will see that how the displacement are varying and how the differential settlement is reduced with the help of pile raft foundation. So just go to simulate stage. Uh, first of all we'll define it. So stage set in the construction stage. So in the stage type, uh, you can perform even the consolidation analysis. Uh, many of the attendees uh, have the query that whether when one could perform the consolidation analysis in the construction stage sequence. Yes, you can perform the same considering the construction stage sequence. For now, it will be the stress. Click add, click add. Basically, I am considering two construction stage in a single model. So first stage, define construction stage. So first of all, I would activate my soils. That is, the first stage is basically the original ground condition. So bottom soil, top soil main, raft excavation. I will recall you that it is still having the ground material property, the ground support and the sulfate. I will just clear the displacement to just initialize the stress. Save it. Now the next step, what I will be doing is that I will excavate the soil that is raft excavation that is I will deactivate the mass so I have excavated the soil so just save it now the next step what I will do is that I will change the excavation or I will pour in the concrete and form my raft so what you can do is that you can now activate this mesh shed but you activate the boundary condition of change property for the same mesh shed so now it is having the mesh shed with concrete property so it is as simple as that so just save it and finally, we will activate the default mesh shed or what is our building which we have imported from Midas Gen. So just save it. Close. So we have defined the first stage in which basically we are only considering the raft foundation. Now let us define the second construction stage. So define construction stage. This is set to. So once again the same for you can just activate the first original ground condition and sulfate and just save it new uh, and this will be deactivating our raft so just save it new now in this stage in addition to the raft you can see I have activated the raft with the boundary condition I would be activating all my pile and I have to activate the pile constraints so just save it so now I'm going for pile raft foundation and finally you can use the default mesh save so this is very, uh, very simple to define the construction stage analysis with MIDAS GTS NX. Now you just need to generate the analysis case. Go to analysis, general, the solution type, just select construction stage. This is CS, uh, that is construction stage with raft. In the analysis control, you can just check on the initial stage for the stress analysis as one and also you can control the other parameters like iteration, the number of iteration from here. We'll be using the default value. Just click apply. And the second will be the CS with pile draft. So in the analysis control, so it's same coming. So construction stage will be construction stage set 2. And in the analysis control, once again, you can select the construction stage 5 click OK and click OK. So in the same model you can create two types of construction stage and consider the uh, analysis for different kind of foundation. So it becomes very simple you need not create two types of foundation for the same model. So after the uh, 
that you need to perform the analysis just perform and click OK so after the analysis I have already uh, have an analyzed file I'll just open it for you okay so this is basically my analyzed file with my building so let us see the results so in the results you can see there are two types of construction stage uh, sequences which we use to define the stages that is CS with raft and CS with pile raft so at E stage now you can see the displacement dy tz direction now if you are uh, you want to consider for a particular measure let's say we are now interested in the raft you want to see the displacement only in the raft so what you can do is that you can just uncheck the other layers and you can see basically how the displacement is taking place in the raft now to see the values uh, there are various options because with finite element modeling the always the problem is how to extract the results now to see the values you can use the option probe probe with probe what you can do you can just click maximum minimum it will directly show you where the maximum value is coming and where the minimum value is coming also if you want to check at particular note you just click on that particular note and it will show you the value so this is how you can extract the results uh, especially for the displacement similarly you can see that you uh, get the various type of beam element forces so beam element forces are basically in the first case as you know that we have not activated the piles so here basically the beam stands for the columns and beams which we have imported from my dust gen so you can also check the bending moment in the same in the y direction and in the z direction also the axial force oh, sorry axial force shear force and shear force in the z direction so you can consider the even the structural behavior in uh, GTS NX now the thing which we are interested is now which kind of foundation which should uh, one should consider so having seen in the excavation for the raft now let us see that how the displacement varies when we are considering it for the piles so just activate the piles and in the result after the fourth stage I will check the displacement so you can see that uh, the displacement once again you can see for seeing the value you can just probe the value and you can select also even if you uh, if you want to get the values in Excel format so what you can do is that you can go to advanced option extract you can just uh, select the analysis case and let's say displacement in tz direction select the cases which you want to so I'm just unchecking the first stage select the nodes whichever are of your interest or you can select all also so for example I'm just selecting few nodes and click on table so you can see that how for each stage the displacement changes for various nodes and you can just export or to it Excel for your report generation so this is how we uh, get uh, different types of values also if you want to see the beam element forces in piles uh, and shear force in piles you can consider the same similarly the bending moment in the piles and bending moment in the Z direction for the piles so uh, this is how we consider uh, the modeling of raft and pile raft considering the superstructure in the same model so I'll just uh, this was uh, the case study which we're doing now I'll just move on to the presentation So I will reply to all the queries uh, once I will just finish my presentation and then I will take all of your queries. So moving on the presentation. So there are few queries like uh, how to decide the uh, mesh sizes so as you can see that we have imported uh, the 
building model so the we should consider the mesh size uh, such as that uh, the, there is proper nodal connection between the imported uh, beam node and the mesh of your model so for this uh, I have chosen that criteria that there should be proper nodal connectivity between the nodes of the imported model and the raft foundation which you have created now let us uh, do the uh, result interpretation for the case study which we have done. So I have selected few nodes and you can see that the percentage reduction in the displacement uh, varies between 35 to 40 percent. Now the most important thing for us was the differential settlement. So you can see that the maximum displacement with raft was coming as like 3.96 mm with pile raft it was coming as 2.40 so the percentage reduction was almost 39.14 now differential settlement is basically the maximum and the minimum settlement uh, consideration so you can see that it was something around 2.49 with raft and it got reduced to 1.33 with pile raft so it is almost like 46 percent reduction in that displacement so we conclude that the pile raft foundation helps in reducing the maximum settlement and has considerable effect in reducing the differential settlement. So moving on, so what are the advantages of considering the superstructure in GTS NX? The first advantage is that now you have a real ground simulation considering the subsurface uh, soil profile variation. So if you have some small soft ground layer or, or like a small patch of soil that could also be considered and uh, giving you a real simulation of what you want to consider. Similarly, now you can consider the soil structure interaction to evaluate the pile raft analysis rather than going for spring stiffness. And finally, now you can perform the dynamic analysis of whole structure considering the damping of soil. So you can see in the figure the response spectrum analysis for such kind of model and this are basically showing the displacement contours in a particular direction. Now next we'll be de uh, dealing with soil modeling for structural design. So as you can see that whenever we go for a structural approach, we go for the wrinkler springs model, where the wrinkler springs uh, themselves uh, represents the soil and the foundation helps us to locate the settlements, how the settlement is going to take place. Whereas in geotechnical approach, we go for the continuum model. We have two types of spaces, like elastic spaces, which are defined with E and new value and the inelastic spaces where we consider the E, nu, C and phi value. So determination of spring stiffness has always been a problem for structural engineer. So spring stiffness is nothing but the ratio of pressure or load over displacement. Now the spring stiffness very much depends on the foundation response. As we know, we have two types of foundation. One is the rigid foundation and the other is the flexible foundation. So first of all, let us study how the, there is change in the foundation response. So as you can see that whenever we go for rigid foundation in the structural approach, the stress distribution always come as uniform from the below and the settlement is also considered as uniform. So when compared to the real ground situation which we obtain in the continuum model, the stress distribution is very much different what we actually have in our structural model. That is we have a very ununiform pressure distribution with very high stiffness at the ends. And also in the settlement you can see that there is a curving end at the ends. So that is also not considered when one go for the structural approach and, and this is how the foundation does bonds differs whenever you are considering the rigid foundation. Now next is the foundation response for flexible foundation and this uh, the stress distribution variation is very much expected or very much similar to what we expect in the structural behavior but once again if you see that the settlement variation is not very much uniform but it is uh, very much different from what we obtain in the continuum model and structural model. Now the solution adopted to consider the stress variation was a very approximate uh, approach. The stiffness of the outermost springs uh, was increased to account for the increase in soil rigidity. For stiff soil like the outer spring stiffness was increased by let's say 30 to 40 percent. 
and for soft soil they may be increased by two to three times. So this is the general practice which one, one adopt for considering the change in variation of the stiffness. Now what one could do is that you can use GTS NX and Midas Gen for the calculation of spring stiffness. First is you need to generate the building with raft as plate element and with fixed boundary condition. Then run the analysis and what you can obtain is that you can obtain the reaction at each node of the plate element. Now generate the same raft, I mean with the same meshing and now you can model the soil mass in GTS NX and you can apply the reaction which, is, uh, which you obtained at each node uh, uh, obtained in the previous step. And then finally you can run the analysis with particular uh, loads in GTS NX and thus you can obtain the reaction as P upon the displacement. That is the reaction upon the displacement. So then uh, this iteration goes on between the structural engineer and geotechnical engineer. Structural engineer provides initially with the column loads. Geotechnical engineer provides with the stiffness. And this iteration goes on until a prescribed convergence criteria. Let's suppose if the convergence criteria is settlement, you can see that uh, we have two different results for two different models and they are approximately the same. So thus you can converge your model and you can say that this is the particular place uh, where you stop and you obtain the final spring stiffness for your model. So finally I would just like to give a brief introduction of the PY nonlinear analysis. PY nonlinear analysis is basically different PY curves have been developed by different institutes to consider the nonlinear behavior of the soils. So in soil works one can perform the PY nonlinear analysis. Now to talk about the PY nonlinear analysis, in this basically the pile is a divided beam and the soil is defined as the nonlinear spring. Now having obtained the nonlinear spring PY curve for each layer, what one would do is that we obtain the we obtain the deflection at each pile segment after the after the analysis and that is after the applying load. And then depending on the deflection, one calculate the soil resistance from the PY curve. Now deflections and soil pr uh, pressures are interconnected and the iterations are obtained and iterations are uh, mainly performed to obtain the correct value of displacement for that particular layer. So this is basically based on the finite difference method. So thus uh, whenever you want to consider such kind of analysis basically you can consider uh, soil works which is basically a 2D software but you can consider the 3D arrangement of the soil and you can obtain the horizontal displacement, the movement, shear pose ground reaction as well as the response PY curve for that particular node at particular location of the pipe. So this is basically what one can do uh, with soil works. So this is just to give a brief introduction of the capability of MIDAS soil works. So with this I would just like to summarize what we uh, have learned today. So first of all we learned about the design approach of the pile raft using the numerical analysis that is the preliminary as well as the complete analysis. The consider of superstructure model from MIDAS Gen to MIDAS GTS NX, how to determine the spring stiffness for the structural model, the 3D modeling of the pile raft foundation in GTS NX and the effectiveness of the pile raft in reducing the differential settlement which could also be a criteria for the preliminary analysis to select which type of foundation one should go with. So with this I would like to end this uh, webinar. Thank you very much uh, to all of you for attending this webinar. If you have any further queries kindly contact us at tech support at midasit.com. Regarding our next webinar topic will be soil structure interaction for soil excavation using 3D finite element method that it will be on June 10th. 3 p.m. and our final presentation of this geotechnical webinar series will be on June 24th 3 p.m. So thank you very much all and if you have any queries kindly write us at tech support at